I'm going to call to order the Effingham County Board of Commissioners regular meeting this October 5th, 2021. It is 5.04 p.m. We have a roll call. Mr. Logan? Here. Mr. Deloach? Here. Mr. Kiefer? Here. Mr. Burnett? Here. Mr. Forrestal? Here. All right. If you want to please rise to the invitation and then send for the request to the chair. Gracious Father, we are so thankful again to be together as a community to consider the business at hand. Uh, we seek your wisdom and your discernment to make those decisions that are first be pleasing to you and a blessing to our constituents. So guide us as we make these decisions and we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, liberty and justice for all. The next item is the approval of the agenda. I have a couple of changes that I see at the clerk has any. Uh, this is not really a change, I just want to note for the board that I've asked Woody Bagley, and he may have some other folks here that will come in a moment uh, after the approval of the agenda to make a brief presentation. The parkway, the idea of closing one of the exits and of course to consider to make a presentation and make a decision right after the give a study for the five days. Hopefully, a couple of minutes we can come back after you for this presentation. So, he'll be making that presentation. That will not be a part of the motion, just let me know that he's going to be here since there's no action to be taken. I do want to move item number uh, one on the consent agenda, move it to item number 11 on the new business. So we have a discussion of the additional holiday. Are there any other additions? Chair, then I'll entertain a motion if you would uh, to approve. Chairman, I think the uh, the second portion of the consent agenda we're probably going to have a discussion there. There's some issues that's come up with that, so I need to discuss that. I think. What's that? The assembly permit. I think we need to have a basic. Yeah, I might have made that. Yeah, that. That'd be fine. Okay. So we're going to move uh, consent agenda item number one. But I'm, I'm going to repeat it and make a motion for the motion to approve the agenda agendas with the changes of moving consent agenda item number one to new business number 11 and moving consent agenda item number two to new business number 12. So we have a motion by Mr. President. Second by Mr. Blows, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed no. And we have our agenda. <clears throat> Next item is approval of the minutes. I wasn't here at the last meeting. I got one little thing that's minor, but it's supposed to be right. On this change order number one with Fawn and Company, they got a Eric is the manager instead of assistant manager. That Eric is manager? Yeah, they got him as manager on it. Right. Well, he had a manager. They explained the change order gotcha. and all that, but that's what it was with Fawn and uh, Pine and Company. I got you. Any other corrections or additions to that? We have a motion to approve the minutes with the one correction of changing from uh, manager to assistant manager, Eric. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion for Mr. Ballou, second for Mr. Walker. Uh, All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Say no. Here United passes your minutes. I welcome my public tonight. We've got quite a few people in the audience. Uh, actually, if you make the comments, to the agenda items only. We try to stick to our agenda and uh, give the, our public plenty of notice when we have the item coming up so they can all participate. If you have a comment, uh, just keep, keep it two or three minutes. I'll give them a presentation, Mr. Baker. We'll give you a little more time for that. It helps everyone have a chance to speak when they need to speak. All our documents are made at this meeting, and all the correspondence is in the clerk's office on the website. So if you've had a chance to review those and already at the perfect time to, to participate in this meeting tonight. 
and that those comments were going to move to our own business since we don't have the sanction of the And the first item of the old business is the funding board recommends approving an application by Greg Colton as agent for Calvin Investments LLC to the zone 71.24 acres located in the Old Road from R1 to I1 Head Industrial for the development of Industrial Warehouse Map in 76. This is parcel number 4B and 4B in the 5th District. This was postponed from the 9721 Commission meeting. So this parcel is currently zoned uh, residential. It was rezoned to residential back in 2007. Um, it has not been successfully developed as residential since that time, although we have seen subdivision applications. Uh, at this time, the owner is requesting to rezone it to industrial. And since the proposed warehouses exceed the 500,000 uh, square feet uh, threshold for development of regional impact, we did submit it for review. The regional commission reviewed it, uh, notified all adjacent jurisdictions and, and interest groups and received a few comments but nothing that really impacted the actual uh, proposal to rezone. So that did delay the initial uh, consideration of this before the planning board. They were pushed back from July to the August meeting. Uh, but anyway, the DRI, the, the, the regional report is included in your packet and it's generally favorable or at least not unfavorable towards this development. Uh, this proposal uh, this proposal in the future it matches the future, the regional future development map, which shows the area as developed. So this is sort of you know it's con we consider consistent with that. It's uh, in our in the county's future land use map. This part, this particular site is shown as a mixed use area, which really can be you know, anything. So again, it's not inconsistent with that. Uh, it was originally proposed to be residential. Now it's proposed to be industrial. And as you know, Old Augusta Road is a county truck route, and so that is was designed to accommodate truck traffic. At, and as, for those reasons, the staff is recommending approval of the rezoning at the planning board meeting. They, the planning board did recommend approval also of the rezoning, but there is some question about the variance and sketch plan that, that comes right after this. But as far as the rezoning goes, there was, there was no particular opposition to that. Okay, we'll open a public hearing and see if there's anyone who would like to speak for this rezoning. Mr. Conkan, do you have the more updated yes. plans that we sent in? Yes, and, and just to, to note, so this was the original sketch plan. There's been some different movement on the proposed buffer reduction. So from the original, this is the current version. This, uh, no, there. this is the That's most the current. recent version that is submitted in response to comments received at the planning board. So just to extend my time together here, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. That's the attorney question this. Can you make his presentation for the zoning and the buffers and everything at one time? So why don't you make your whole presentation? I will. And we can discuss it as a whole, and then we'll go down to three items. All right, that's what I'll do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a 71-acre tract, um, which we'd like to put two warehouses on the track. It's on Old Augusta Road, as you well know in this uh, body. You've seen a number of applications, and you see development occurring already that this is uh, becoming rapidly a an important truck route and a supporting a warehouse area for the port. Um, including in the recent rezoning, there's a track directly across the street from this track, Caddy Corner across the street of Abercorn Road, um, went uh, across Old Augusta Road. The Caddy Corner across there would be a track that was rezoned uh, a few months ago. Uh, we appreciate the recommendation of the Planning Commission on the rezoning. Uh, would we'll go over the standards very briefly with you, uh, which of course you always uh, take into account when you're making your decision. Is the proposal inconsistent with the county's master plan? And as Ms. Con Cannon said, no, it's not. This is a mixed use area, and so it is consistent. Would it tax the public facilities such as streets, utilities, and schools? And again, no, because the road was built for truck traffic, uh, Old Augusta Road was. Plenty of utilities, schools are adequate. Not that many people work uh, in the warehouses, so they certainly wouldn't uh, overtax the school system. Could traffic, third question, tra traverse single family neighborhoods? No, it won't. It goes straight out on the Old Augusta Road, so it will not go through neighborhoods. Does it have a reasonable economic use under existing zoning? And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't predict the future, but. 
I don't imagine there'll be much more, if any, residential development in the Old Augusta Road, you know, in this section of the county. So it really doesn't have a reasonable economic use. If it, if it had, it would have been uh, developed already, you know, uh, over the last uh, decades. Um, is it spot zoning? No, as I've mentioned, there's been a good bit of industrial zoning, including Caddy Corner across the street, so it's certainly not spot zoning. Um, would it affect existing use or usability of adjacent or nearby property? And I'll go over the buffers in a second, uh, in the second part of what I'm going to talk about for the variances, and I think the answer would be no because we're given a very large buffer as required by the ordinance on the one side where there is a residential use, which is the Abercorn Road side of the property. Um, are the people, are nearby residents opposed? Uh, in the planning is only we had one gentleman, Mr. Reiner, who lives across Abercorn Road, speak in favor. Miss Agoos, if that's how you pronounce her name, spoke uh, against it, but she really was concerned at that point, at, at that representation, we were proposing, I believe, a 150 foot buffer along Abercorn Road, and she asked that it be increased to 300 feet and to satisfy that request, we have modified the plan as you see here uh, for um, a 300 foot buffer on the Abercorn Road side. Are there other conditions that support a decision against the proposal? And frankly, I don't know of any. So I think the rezoning, uh, again, was a, a favorable recommendation, which we appreciate and would appreciate also, of course, your vote. On the, on the variances, um, I know you've heard a good bit of variance request for these tracks in the last few months. Uh, I'll just kind of paraphrase what the standard is. Are there unique physical circumstances or conditions peculiar to the property which cause unnecessary hardship with no possibility that the property can be developed in strict conformity with the provisions of the zoning ordinance so that a variance is necessary to allow the reasonable use of the property? And we think this is true in this case. Of 71 acres, you have, your ordinance requires 300 foot buffer around all sides, which would take up 45 of the 71 acres or 63% of the tract of land. Um, there's a large swath of wetlands also that intersects the site, which is the yellow. Uh, you'd be looking at the uh, picture on your left, I would hope. Uh, and it, without the buildings on it, and that swath of wetlands also uh, makes it difficult to use the site, particularly when it added to the, the large buffer requirement. So we're asking for some variances, not on the Abercorn Road side. We, we're uh, complying with a 300 foot wide variance, which is at the bottom of the picture shown with the buildings there. And then along Old Augusta Road, we're asking for a 100 foot uh, buffer. Old Augusta Road itself is 150 foot right of way um, and when you add the 100 foot buffer to it which will only be pierced in two places by entrances you'll have a fairly solid buffer along Old Augusta Road, a good buffer. <clears throat> on top of that on the other side of Old Augusta Road there are only two landowners one of which is the Cowans, who I represent, who own this property, who when they're trying to rezone. And the other property is a very, very low, and I don't think it could ever be developed. It's, it looks like wetlands. So uh, impeding or, uh, uh, some type of future development, first of all, a 100-foot buffer is a big buffer, which would keep uh, ameliorate any difficulties from the, our development, but also the fact that the Cowans own half of it and the rest of it is really low, at least 100 foot should suffice. The, the big buffer ask is on the two sides back up to property owned by the, the state of Georgia. I, I don't know why they bought it. It might have been to mitigate some work they were doing, but they own it. It'll never be developed. It's not pristine marsh type buffer, it's woods, as I would call it, forest or woods but it'll still never be developed, never be any houses built or any, any development of any kind. So if there's a place to uh, do away with or uh, a buffer requirement against that uh, property, undevelopable property owned by the state of Georgia is the perfect place. By doing that, we had to make our building smaller to allow the 300 foot buffer on Abercorn Road, but we still have a usable piece of property with this scenario, 100 feet buffer on Old Augusta Road, 300 foot buffer on Abercorn Road, and then no buffer on the uh, where the state owns property. And so that's the nature of the variance request. I think the one that, that 
gave heartburn to the, and Teresa can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, to the Planning Commission was we were at that time proposing 150 feet on Abercorn Road. And since they were all in one application, they had to be all voted yes or no. I don't think the other two uh, requests caused any difficulty, but it was just the Abercorn Road, which we've amended and corrected. So yeah, I'll be glad to answer any questions. They've been notified of the application like everybody else. So if they chose to uh, get online and to see what the application was about, they certainly have the right to do so. They were in the joining process. Just like any other, yeah. any other property. Yeah. They've been notified. Yes. Very good. Just make sure we cover that basis well. Any other questions, discussion for the board? My biggest concern is 300 foot on the Abercorn Road. Yep, they've given us that. So yeah. Originally, yeah. I think the application did not have that, but now, We'll get that meant to approve those variances, but any other motion to approve uh, the zoning for um, yeah, yeah, I'll make sure how, how are we approaching this. We're, we're just approving the rezoning now. R1 to I don't remember one on your business. Okay. The motion to, is it is an alternative one? Yeah, there's an alternative one in addition to five conditions. If you want to approve the R1 to I1 with five conditions, your motion would be to approve alternative one. Great. And I make a motion to approve alternative one. Second. Motion by Mr. Keith, second by Mr. Lipper to approve alternative one. All things in that. Uh, All opposed, no. And carries. So we move to item two of the old business, which will be the second reading. Consideration to approve the second reading of an application by Greg Coleman as agent for Calvin Investments, LLC, to rezone 71.24 acres located on Old Augusta Road from R1 to I1. In the industrial for development of an industrial warehouse map number 476, parcel number 4B and 4D in the 5th district, which was postponed from 9 7 of 2021. Commissioners meeting, do you have a motion to approve the second reading? Make a motion to approve the second reading. Second. Motion Mr. Keeper, second by Mr. Burdett to approve the second reading. All the purpose of that. Uh -huh. All opposed, no. And it kept passes unanimously. Now we're going to move to the vans. So this is the buffers. No buffer on the north side where the DOT property is or the back side, which would be the east where the DOT property is. There'll be a 100 foot buffer along the road, but you've got 150 foot right away, plus you've got the other side of the road. And then you've got 300 foot Abercorn, which we were concerned about, which cost us to pay the last time. So that's the, that's the buffer which would be approved under alternative one. Correct. That's a, that's a 200 foot buffer along the road. That's correct, right? 300. That's a 200 foot variance, right? Yes, yeah. 200 foot variance, that's correct. I just want to make sure we're, yeah. we're on the side. Okay. Oh, the variance, good too. So, this is a, um, 
public hearing. Yeah, I stood sure. Let me see if there's any opposition to this. heard the favor. Is there any opposition to this variance this tonight? Looking at public hearing. Anyone in opposition to the variance is requested on the property just on the C01. We'll close the public hearing and now we'll turn the motion for alternate. I make. Does cover the um, the revision of it, the revised revisions in the summary of the background. That we had last uh, parcels to the south there, where it's got all the uh, changes, right. and then the alternative that uh, uh, the maintaining the water quality, etc. That's right. I'm just restated since it's not actually stated in this alternative. It is a no buffer on the DOT sites. Well, it's a 200 foot variance on the front, with a 100 foot buffer along the Augusta. And no variance. Yeah. No variance on the uh, Abercorn side. So we've stated that clearly, so the motion would be That's right. understood along with the map that we're already looking at that shows that. And I make a motion to include that as stated, as well as alternative one um, with the other um, stipulations. So, all right, Mr. Kiefer made the motion as. Alternative one, and as I stated, and then um, with the condition stated in alternative one, and I have a second to Mr. Burnett. All the folks say aye. Uh -huh. All the folks no. And it passes. So we move to the second reading consideration of the previous second reading on application by Greg Coleman as agent for Calvin Investments at LIC for damage located on Old Custer Road mm -hmm. from the required buffers between I 1 Heavy Industrial and All 1. AR1 zoning district, map number 476, parcel number 4B and 4B in the 5th district. This was postponed from 9721 commission meeting. Motion to approve the second reading. Make a motion to approve the second reading. Second. Motion to Mr. Keeper, second Mr. Corbett to approve the second reading. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed no. Any kids? Unanimously. Item number five is a sketch for the planning board recommends denying an application by Greg Coleman as agent for Coward Investments LLC for a sketch plan for the Coward property located on Old Augusta Road, Mountain 476, parcel number 4B and 4D in the 5th District, postponed from 9 7 2021 Commissioner's meeting. Now, the sketch plan has been redone, though, right? And so, this. I think I see the old one in the packet. It is in the packet, but under the uh, amended material, there's a sketch plan that's different. And this is what we're looking at now, right? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So if we go down to make sure we've got this correctly made for our clerk to get clear. Previous fish plan from Cowboy Property with right. the following conditions. My sketch plan shows under the one we have on this side. Keep keep going down. Yeah. And this one is just 300 in here. Yeah. You just keep going down. Page 107, page 107, if I remember correctly. And just to be clear, uh, approval of a sketch plan doesn't inherently grant any variances, yeah, or should it be removed yeah. by variances? Yeah. Uh, I might know that we're, we, are, we are looking yeah. at page 107. Is it 107 on the. Uh, it is 107. I might make a note that we are. Approve the sketch plan that's noted on page 107 because there's several sketch plans. Yeah. What page did you have? About? Page 107. That's where the salt is. 300 foot buffer or no buffer. It's dated August 26th. And it's dated August 26, page 107. So sketch plan dated that's August 26, page 107. If you approve alternative form, that's what you'll be approving tonight. Any other questions or discussion? So I have a motion to approve alternative. For that, I, I make a motion to approve the sketch plan. Um, and that is a sketch plan dated. Oh, 26. Yes. What was it? What was the date? August 26. Oh, August, yes. Page 107. Page 107. Motion of Mr. Keeper. Second by uh, um, Mr. Burnett. Any favor say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, 
Before we get into uh, new business, we're going to do a presentation from Mr. Woody Bagley. Thank you, Mr. Well, I've asked Mr. Woody Bagley to come. He has been talking with me up for the last couple of years. At least. I put him off because we get going to show down the DOT and our funding issues with sidetracking our parkway. Well, we've got it design, we've got to let and the verbalizing equipment. And I said, I put it that time, I'll let you come and make a presentation. It's sounded reasonable, but I want to look at it. I think he's also talking to him and he's talking to some of our public officials, our fire chief and our um, sheriff and our EMS. So he's looking at a great on the uh, parkway that he would like to close. Forest, Forest Haven Drive. Forest Haven Drive. And so I'm going to make a presentation. We receive it for information, ask some questions, but we'll be back in, in about a month to consider if you want to ask the DOT to move forward on this. At least this way, we'll start on the parkway. Yeah, okay? Mr. Bagley? All right. Uh, Mr. Bagley? Well, as, as you said, that we've been going on with this for quite some time, and I most likely talked to more people than, than wanted to talk to me. But anyway, uh, we're here for, I'm representing the uh, people that live on Forest Haven. And uh, as, there's our group back here. So that's all that could make it here by five o'clock today. But anyway. Uh, this has been going on for quite some time. Uh, I think it originated way back when Toss Allen was, uh, he was the chief engineer for the county at that time. And the first meeting, or was maybe the second meeting came up, and it was discussed about tying Forest Haven into the parkway. And at that time, he gave a letter <coughs> to, the, to the board saying that uh, it would be up to the to the residents of Forest Haven to be attached to the parkway or have a cul-de-sac put at the end of, of Forest Haven. So uh, we have petitioned for the cul-de-sac to be put in, although we don't need the cul-de-sac. If you'll see on our map up there, we've got a cul-de-sac right there at Crane Court. And uh, that's what we would rather use. That is our cul-de-sac for equipment moving in and out of, of, of commercial equipment have to go in like fire trucks or something, turn around and come back out. And then we would like to have a just a barricade put right here that, uh, I don't know if y'all can see it up here on this screen or not, but the barricade put just past uh, Dave's driveway to not have any through traffic going any further than that on Forest Haven. Uh, we, have, uh, we have petitioned that. We've got 15 of the uh, residents on Forest Haven that have signed the petition wanting the cul-de-sac in lieu of being attached to the parkway. Uh, we also, uh, we went a little further than that, I think one of our conversations with Wesley that he said that we would need to talk to the people behind us on Squirrel Run and also on Moss Loop. Well, we've, I've talked to 28 of the 34 that back there. There was a few of them that we couldn't find. There was some that uh, just had no interest in signing or no interest in even being involved with it, so they wouldn't sign anything. But we do have 28 signatures. So we've got the, the signatures for the 15 of the 17 on Forest Haven is Exhibit 1. Exhibit 2, we've got the 28 signatures that vote in favor of us being uh, granted a cul-de-sac rather than being a, a, a thoroughfare to a parkway. Uh, also, I talked with uh, Sheriff McDuffie and he gave us a letter to who it may concern about that he was not in favor of another street being tied to the parkway. So we've got this, they got the letter from Toss Allen. Uh, so this is what we're proposing that uh, we would rather have Forest Haven remain a quiet street, uh, you know, used for 
the residents that live there and not a thoroughfare because if any of you have been up to Hodgeville and uh, Highway 30 at 7 o'clock or 7.30 in the morning, so there's a 20 minute backup. And I figure if I, 15 minutes of that would be coming through our area to get to the parkway if it was uh, a, another way in. And so, but uh, anyway, it's just another thing that we uh, are pushing for that we just would rather have the street remain like it is. It's designed for a residential street and not a thoroughfare for large trucks or a lot of traffic or anything else. Uh, so basically, that's, that's what the long and short of it is. I told Wesley I would be as quickly as possible. Uh, the, the, the street that we're talking about, you can see Forest Haven there on the map and it's quite curvy. Uh, the trucks, we've got some aerial photos of big trucks coming in. You can't pass two trucks on, the, on Forest Haven without the, one of them or both of them running off the road on the other side to get by because the street is so curvy through there. So that's another reason for, for the, the for us to have the cul-de-sac. Uh, now, we can, I could go on and tell you how, how bad the street is or how, well, not designed well enough to carry the, the support of the big trucks. Well, and maybe we need to ease your mind with that. I'm not saying the board and the opposition wants you to do, but that's not a truck route. We just need to put this. If there's a truck on that road, they would be ticketed. If they don't get the class. So the big truck should not be on it. Well, you would be surprised at the number of trucks on it now because there is a somewhat of a construction or grading company way back in the back off of Squirrel Run. And there is quite a number of tractor trailers that come through that street now. And that's so what's... Can check into anyway? <laughs> well, well, that's well, that's beyond that. well, if they're... That's the area of construction, and that's where they, that's where they live. Oh, okay. But they're all forcing? Well, they have to go to Forest Haven. Yeah, what was that's, that? That's their, that's their primary residence. Here at each construction. So that's a crazy business already on that property. Here's a grandfather calls for businesses that were the part of Well, there, there's something back there because we've got dump trucks uh, in and out of there quite a bit. I think there's a grading company. That may be approved. And I was talking about, I was thinking of semis. They should not be out there. Well, there's, there's quite a few semis that come through there. I don't know if they bring in materials back in there, but uh, loader equipment, I mean, there's some big loaders that come in and out there. So there's there's a lot of traffic in there that maybe shouldn't be there, but uh, there he is. Yeah, it's... Uh, I forgot the name of the trail that goes back in there. There's about four or five homes or residents back in there, and one of them, uh, I think that one of them has a some type of grading or, or some kind of contractor that lives back in there. They would, they would be permitted. Yeah. The other trucks would not be. Yeah. Well. One of these. Yeah, it's across a, the railroad track. Yeah, it's on the other side of the railroad track. I've forgotten the name of the street over there. Okay. Yep. All the way back in the back. Okay, I got you. But he he generates uh, quite a few heavy trucks that comes in and out of there sure. but and and the road is young young y'all the ones had it re, uh, repaved one several years back but it's starting to show a lot of signs of wear and tear on it now and a lot of it is on those inside curves where these big trucks come through because when they come around if they don't go over the center line to keep the trailer on the road then the trailers back tires are, are coming between the asphalt and the and the ground beside it. So they they tearing it up quite a bit. But anyway, like I said, we were going to keep it as short and sweet as possible. I think that all of you know what we're trying to do and, and the reason why. Uh, I've talked to 
the three people that you told me that I had to talk to, the, the uh, sheriff and Mrs. McDuffie with EMS and also Mr. Hodges with the fire marshal. So, and I don't think we've got any complaints on anything, but if y'all would like to ask any questions, I'll see what I can do to help out now, or if not, uh, I'll, I'll stop with that, and uh, hopefully we don't have to make the next one real long. Do you have any documents you're going to leave with the clerk tonight that you can make? Uh, no, well, I can make you copies of all of the, all of the statements, I mean, all of the uh, signatures. I think they would like that, that'd be great. Okay. You have, if you could. I thought I gave that to y'all once before, but that's been a couple of years ago, so that's most like a, easier if you would have that. Just make sure. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll make you copies of everything I told you that I had here. I got the the letter from Toss Allen. Yep. Uh, the, the signatures of all. Email to me, and I'll forward to the clerk. Email. We can forward to the clerk's email email. She can get it to our board. We'll, we'll take in the next couple of meetings to discuss it. You can talk to the I'll, fire chiefs and. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's what he written it to who it may concern. And so I've got that one right here, but I would like I said I'll take it home, make y'all copies of all of that and uh, I think that'll be very helpful. The process that I see on the manager correct if I'm wrong is that we'll give the board thirty days to review it, asking the officials what their thoughts are on what they think should be done. Board considers it. We probably need to make an announcement of a public notice. See if it's in the opposition, just to be safe on that side. Yeah, and y'all. Well, there will be. It will be a road closure. So I think I think there's a public hearing process. I could be wrong. Well, not uh, necessarily because the road itself uh, is uh, is uh, you're, you're well, well you're going to be uh, dead ending one road. Uh, the other section of the road would still be connected directly to uh, Effingham Parkway. Um, so uh, right now it's a dead end. Right, right now it's essentially a dead end at the end of Moss Loop. So it's. I, I'll uh, look. Uh, in, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah I, I'll, I'll look into see um, if, if they, technically it's yeah, a road closure, but I don't think right it's. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I would say legally look and see if you go the right way, also too, because we have public hearings showing the parkway. Mm -hmm. People in that area may have come and looked and they have assumed sure. a certain uh, pathway. And that way they have full opportunity to come speak at that meeting yeah. in a couple of meetings if they have the opposition. The, the parkway will cut us off from Squirrel Run and Moss Loop. Mm -hmm. It will open the residents there to the parkway, and at the parkway they can either go to Goshen or Highway 30. Because 90% of the people that come out of there are going to one of those locations. Very few of them come through uh, Forest Haven to go on the Colic Helmet. And uh, I had a couple of people when we were getting the signatures from them, they said, you know, well, how much will that change the, the drive time if they wanted to go to the, that Colic Helmet Elementary School back there? Uh, it's about three quarters of a mile further if you come down, turn right on the parkway, turn left on Goshen, Hodgeville, turn left, and back to the right on Colic Helmet. Yeah, so let's do this. Let's uh, give 30 days in June and November. Let's get some kind of public notice if it's a signage out there just for those who have public hearings with the parkway walls, make sure there's no opposition. And I don't see any issue from my standpoint of what you're asking for. I would like to get all the input we can, and then we put it for consideration. Is and what we're, just for the record, what we were considering is a letter of support to GDOT, since, it's, since yeah. it is, in fact, a, um, a Georgia DOT uh, project. 
Um, so it would be a letter of support uh, for the change order uh, for GDOT. Now, this change order should have um, a positive effect on the budget of the project, but you don't, you don't know for sure. We are getting rid of turn lanes. We are getting rid of uh, some additional a asphalt um, uh, and simply terminating the road instead. Uh, and, uh, so it should have a positive effect on it, or it should be in probably a, uh, close to a, a net zero uh, effect budget-wise. But it, the, the request for approval has to go through them, uh, and they have to intern approve, intern approve it. We, when we did sit down with the contractor on this, we had uh, discussed uh, some locations for um, uh, bar pits. Um, we did bring up this possibility to him, uh, and he did not think it was uh, a very uh, big deal to accommodate this. So. Okay. And I think just when you're talking about, you know, whether it be a dead end or a side, we just need to mitigate public something here because so that is a problem can't So, mm -hmm. but there, there, there's ways we can do that on locations and have it there, which I see there's already some. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a cul-de-sac right there on Crane Court. Exactly, that's what I'm looking at. So I mean, it's you know, okay. yeah. So the factor in the GDOT did the study, and we you know, doing our studies. Is this going to uh, are we counting on some of this thoroughfare to alleviate some traffic? You know, we're going to block that off. That would be my biggest concern. Uh, are we going to train some traffic headaches in the other areas? But not? Is Floyd taking the pass route? Sir? Is Floyd taking the pass route? No, it's paper. It was actually the paper. Oh, yeah, so there is ash on underneath the base. I don't know if there's any reclamation or what they did. Well, this is what we have a full discussion with the action in the 30 days. So let's take that information, talk to the sheriff, and talk to the public safety. Um, well, we can't be saying it already. Not doing this, or we messing up something else. You know, you know the, the, the traffic study that supports it. Maybe we you block this off. You know, we're okay for three years, and then you know, we, we messed up the traffic. No chance that a really good traffic flow in the county. I was going to answer the question, but a lot of like that. Yep. That should be something the design firm should be able to make that change in a model. Right. Well, the model, it did. It was a, a small impact, and yeah, yeah close it off. Huge impact down the road, and trying to get kids to school, keep them out of the county. I think I can understand some of that. Good point. So we can relay those to our manager and get with the engineers if you decide you want to go through the recommendation of this to pursue that. Might try to get some preliminary information about the cook team and how we do that. What? Preliminary information on. With that restrict traffic flow of the way and okay. well, I mean, I'll, I'll see if they include Forest Haven anyway in um, in any of the traffic models with the traffic master plan. Gotcha. Um, and, yeah. and if I'll um, mention if it's closed, does it affect it in any way? They'll, they should be able to That's a pretty simple give it to those numbers. Good. Right. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Bagley. We'll, well look at this. The traffic, the right now with Forest Haven is what we live on is a one way in one way out now i mean if we go further back in there we've got to come back out the same way so it wouldn't affect us as far as you know whether we have to go someplace else if i come out of my driveway and turn right i got to pass my house to go back out onto the main road i would hope the model didn't assume through traffic on I can't imagine. Oh, I know, but, but yeah. I'm assuming it did, but it can, and so therefore changing it won't affect it. Exactly. It's a simple one. to make sure that's right. It's a good question. It's easy to answer through our traffic study. But the savings on that, I would think, would more than outweigh, you know, any kind of cost to it because you, you've got all the curb cuts and radiuses and the A cell, D cell lanes, the whole nine yards on the parkway that you don't have to to do at that time. Well, let's, let's hold that for uh, that meeting because this is not designed for discussion, which is a presentation, so the board can start there looking at it. And so we'll, we'll get their questions answered and, and we'll put it on the agenda and notify you so you can be back to get a discussion during that night. I, and uh, hopefully that'll be in two, two minutes. I'll, I'll be here at the next one. So, not the next meeting, but probably two minutes. No, that, I mean the next meeting. <laughs> good. All right, thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate all those who came, and we'll see if we can help you with this project.
Once again, DOT is going to have a final say. We can only recommend and show our approval from our state. Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of these questions like what the DOT is going to have to the same thing. So yeah. 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 we may approve it, they may come back and say, yeah, the DOT, where we got, you know, I'm trying to get the temperature, we got 15, 17, we got 150 trying to get the temperature. Okay. Just move to our new business and we'll have a full discussion of the issues. I understand that we're asking for the documents to us and we're going to review those and discuss the staff and our potential public officials. Right. All right. Under new business, consideration to approve a contract with the American Signal Corporation, ASC, for a mass notification system as recommended by the emergency Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is going to be um, this is something we've been looking at for a while um, as far as getting as much information out to the public as we can and um, a lot of the counties around us actually already have these systems in place as well so um, what it will allow us to do is set up to where we can automatically filter um, emergencies like for example if a tornado warning comes out making sure we get these out as fast as possible um, right now a lot of our notification systems actually require us to go in and manually send this data out we can actually set it up so pass-throughs will go out to the citizens um, it's also going to be available to other county departments so you could set up groups if need be to um, for any type of notifications that or you customers or things like that. yes this can be used for Really, just about the cell phone notifications now. I have it on my phone. It's not supposed to be valid. It's supposed to be keyed into an alert, and it's supposed to default from me and my image services and go out and say join it. It was under um, the current um, website. However, we've been we've had we've had some issues with actually whether the works are going out or not, and whether everybody's receiving them. Um, and this, we did several demos with different companies, and this company, oddly enough, was the cheapest and seemed to be the most functional based on our local needs. So how, I probably should know more about this than I know, but how is the notification come to me, John Doe? You can set up via email or phone. Now, it does, it does require the user to, whoever wants to opt in, will have to go in, so we'll do a campaign trying to get the information out there. But um, you can set it up for email, text, Phone alerts. So. I think phone alerts would be the way you want to go. And so if we, so we could put in the paper, hey, go with them, sign up, and as soon as there's a dangerous weather within 10 miles of your house, you're going to be able to alert. Yes, sir. Okay. Like Is there that. an app or not really? It's more just a. Um, it they want to be there. I'll have to look into that, but I will say that we can go in and like, if there's something happens, we can actually go in and geofence as well. Mm -hmm. Where if you had a traffic accident that you needed to notify certain people, for example, a hazmat situation, you could go in and geofence and it'll send it to anybody that's within that portal. Okay, sounds good. That sounds like a low cost for uh, rapid alert systems. Any other questions? Well, I do, I do get comment here situations. How do I see people wondering how do, how, how do I get the information? Yeah, so. Everybody's got a cell phone. If we can get uh, automatic alerts or something. Like the alerts, Amber alerts. I'm not sure that the text app. Yeah, it's a time. You got the text, it's a hurricane, it's 25 miles off the coast, it's a cat, whatever. I can see people out there. You know, if it comes through like Amber, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because not everybody has a radio like we do. Police scanner. And when I got into Facebook, I'm glad that the 20 was at zero. Um, I don't know. It's not that pretty bad idea. It wasn't <laughs> falling in my house. We were missing it. Any other questions, discussion? See, this does not have an alternative. So I'm going to read it and, and just say I'll make that motion. A motion to approve the contract with the American Signal Corporation for the mass notification system. A motion? So moved. Thank you. Motion of Mr. Burnett, second by Mr. Keeper. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor say aye. Thank you. Too much money. I'm number two. Seven. New business.
consideration to approve the purchase of turnout gear for fire rescue. Okay. Um, this is going to be um, for. Normally, we buy in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 sets of turnout gear per year. This allows us to keep it on a rotating basis instead of doing very large purchases every 10 years, every seven to 10 years. Um, with COVID last year and some of the concerns we had as far as um, worrying about cash flows and all that, we did postpone last year's purchase. So this year, we were um, requesting to purchase 27 sets. Um, normally, this would fall within you know local levels of approval, but being that it's um, it is for fifty-eight thousand dollars. Obviously, we had to come to the board. Um, and this this gear, like I said, it's got a maximum lifespan of ten years. Um, we notice for the most part we get a six to seven years on average because of you know wear and tear. But um, and we this is purchased was bid through MPP.gov, which is a collective purchasing group, and it's something we've used from we buy turnout gear, fire hose. Uh, large, large amount of our equipment that it is it saves us having to go through a lot of the bidding um, local bidding processes to where it's just it's bid nationally any questions or discussion uh, I don't see an alternative so let me read it we need a motion to approve the purchase of turnout gear for fire rescue for 27 sets at a price of 58,257 dollars Second. Motion by Mr. Burdett. That's second by Mr. Fuller. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor say aye. And the pass is unanimous. Thank you. Item number three. Consideration to approve to be advised. Excuse me. <coughs> consideration to approve and advise the government agreement. <coughs> in a resolution of support. This is number 21-049, 2018 in uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, this uh, is, if you recall, back in December uh, of last year, uh, the board approved uh, amending uh, the uh, IGA uh, with the hospital authority regarding uh, some debt that was issued uh, years earlier. Um, now they are in the uh, in the process of uh, issuing uh, the certificates, I'm sorry, the uh, revenue anticipation uh, certificates, uh, and they simply want to change the amount of the loan downward uh, from 39 million to 35.3 million. Uh, that's the only amendment uh, in the agreement is reduction in the loan amount. Um, again, this uh, uh, does, did not change back in December. Uh, the total amount approved uh, to be loaned. It essentially was refinancing uh, and doing a small new issuance on the debt, but it stays within the limits uh, that we had originally agreed. Uh, and uh, since we're, all we're doing is uh, reducing the amount uh, uh, in the agreement of the loan, uh, staff is recommending uh, approval uh, alternative one. Any questions or discussions? Motion for alternative one. I am moving to vote number one. Second. Motion by Mr. Loper, second by Mr. Burdett for alternative one. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor say aye. The kids. Now, so item number four, consideration to approve the ratify and affirm to contract with the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, this is GB and R, Coastal City Grant for a grant award, excuse me, grant award. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this contract is for the Georgia DNR Grant Award that was accepted in the September, 10th, uh, September 7th Commissioner's Meeting. This was the $80,000 award for the Stormwater Master Plan, and the contract is just the standard award agreement that DNR requires in order to move forward. Yes, staff recommends Alternative 1, ratify and affirm the contract with Georgia DNR Coastal Incentive Grant Program for the Grant Award. Very good. Thank you, Mark. Uh, any questions, discussion? Motion to approve alternative one. Make a motion to approve alternative one. Okay. Motion on Mr. Burdett, second by Mr. Loper to approve alternative one. All in favor say aye. All opposed no. And it passes unanimously. Okay. Number five, consideration to approve the purchase of two stretchers to be installed in the 
Services for Emergency Medical Services. Yes, sir. Good evening. Allison Bruton, purchasing agent. Uh, these are two new stretchers that will go in the two ambulances uh, that we already have on order. Um, staff is recommending alternative one. Any questions? Discussion? Yeah. <laughs> We, uh, we currently have out to bid for three new ambulances, um, and the stretches are going to be included uh, with this. This is for both? Mm -hmm. It's total for both, yes. If you have specific questions about that, you're going to have to ask Ms. Wanda. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of information on it. Uh, we didn't put this on the original plan is because what we didn't consider is that the ambulances that were retiring um, are of such an age uh, that the connection points um, uh, for their existing structures no longer meet the current standards. Uh, so we're upgrading, uh, so we had to get upgraded stretchers uh, for this. And they're not simple stretchers, they are, you know, the hydraulic lift and, you know, you, put, lift or whatever. Yeah, okay. um, you just put them in there, they connect, and it, uh, and it kind of pushes them into the ambulance itself. So um, it's less taxing and it meets current standards. For 18,000 piece, what kind of motorized engine do they have? Companies <laughs> 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 and Ferrari. Some of the, the, just the sheer weight of some people lived in, and I just have it. Right, Yeah, we'll <laughs> We need to best. I might need to ride with one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you want know what model is? Any good high price? Striker? Yeah, what striker? What model is? Uh Power Pro XTMTS. To recertify for two. <laughs> you know anything about these stretchers? Are they competitive in the market? Same, same. Pretty much what you have to do. Well, I, I, I think with what we what we run into on this and um, the the heart monitors and and so on and so forth is um, there is not a lot of competitiveness uh, in this market. Uh, and so we're essentially going out to industries, I mean, to the same wholesalers trying to get better prices on the, on the same goods. Um, so it, as with most medical uh, equipment, it's uh, kind of, you're, you, the price is what they set. Any other questions, discussion? We have a motion for all kinds of ones. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Kiefer. Can I have a second, Mr. Lynch? I mean, Mr. Loper. Mr. Loper, second on that, please. Okay, second. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Any kids? No, Mr. Item number six, consideration to approve and affirm verification of the quote submitted by Sirius. American Insurance Company for the Castro Inmate Medical Insurance for the Infantine County Jail. Yes, sir. So this insurance covers major medical expenses for jail inmates who are not under the state custody. Uh, the quote as provided by Sirius American Insurance Company is broken down in your staff report. Uh, the price per inmate has remained the same. The increase is driven by the increase in inmates from last year. And staff recommends alternative one. I, I've got a question for the sure for the patient. If you if you violate the state charge, not to mention about traffic, it's state violations. Is that a state? I think it, if it, if you're not like a state custody inmate, this is for the inmates that are at the jail. If, if that's what you're asking, I'm sorry. Yeah, if you get a, uh, a speed speeding 20 miles over speed, mm -hmm. that's a violation of state ordinance. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm gonna get a ticket from the county, mm -hmm. and if I go to jail. Mm -hmm. You got a DUI drunk when you do it. Those are both state violations. Is, is that no, if I have a bad toothache that night, who's paying for that? Is it insurance or? 
It's a very good question. I would think unless you are in state custody at the state prison, then you're, I think that's the difference between prison and jail. If you're in jail, it's my understanding. <laughs> right. Because we have this issue with the cities when they pick them up and they put them in our jail, it's going to cover them because it's a city, if it's on a city ordinance, mm -hmm. that's one of the questions we have in service delivery. But if it was a state violation, then the arguments from the municipals around the state are this is a state violation, so it's not a city well, the jail person is a right. state violator. Yeah, that I don't know. <laughs> I just want to this is but entire law enforcement that is enforcing that, but you know what I mean? I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer, but I think we need to know maybe just the process and to make sure insurance is paying for everything being paid. We may be paying for a lot of stuff out there that it may not be about custody, it may be considered state in there, but it's a state violation. That's my question. Okay. We want to look into that, make sure we're not paying for these medical bills if your insurance is supposed to cover it or so. Okay. You may be assuming because of George State Patrol didn't bring a matter to us. Right. That's uh, not the insurance coverage, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure in depth. My understanding was there's the state custody inmates, which are the prison, and then there's the jail inmates, which are the jail. Um, but I can definitely speak to the sheriff and Captain Bars and see if they could shed some light on that. Yeah, if it's unclear what I'm asking, just have to meet and get with me tomorrow sometime. Uh, I just want to make sure that we have insurance covering this catastrophe higher over a certain limit that it's covering all those that it should be covering. We're not just assuming it's our liability. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 I like having the high emissions keeps us out of trouble. So any other questions, discussion? The motion to approve alternative one. The motion to approve alternative one. Second. Motion Mr. Bloss. Second, Mr. Lopez, with the alternative one, all in favor say aye. Aye. All of those no. And pass it unanimously. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to set the consideration to approve the deed use agreement for cost share and the upsizing of the deed use line extension uh, along Blue Jay Road from 6 inch to 12 inch. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Eric Larson, Assistant County Manager. Uh, you have the agreement in your package as long, along with the proposal from the engineering firm for the developer and the cost estimates for both a 6-inch line and a 12-inch line. Uh, we have reuse up to Pinewood subdivision on Blue Jay Road. This proposal is to extend reuse to this Blue Jay Commons development, which is, uh, if you're familiar with the area, it's where McCall and Blue Jay intersect. We're currently building the curve in that intersection, but this subdivision be uh, really right across the street from that curve in that convenience store. Uh, the, in, the developer only needs six inch line to serve his, his uh, development with reuse, but if we allow the six inch extension, it really limits our ability to extend that line beyond Blue Jay Commons in the future. Our uh, ordinance uh, foresee, foresaw these type of things, and there is actually a procedure in the ordinance about cost sharing and upsizing a line when there is a community benefit in addition to the developer. And so uh, the cost share agreement is we're paying the increased material costs and construction costs for a 12 inch line versus that of a six inch line. Uh, there is no money out of pocket because we actually pay this in the form of credits back on the reuse service recovery fees that we'll collect when we issue building permits for the subdivision. So How do we verify, I mean you said the developer's engineer cost estimate, do, do we verify those numbers? Yes I did, I've I reviewed the plans and verified the numbers, yes sir. They're reasonable. It used to be that um, pipe was cheap and it was, you know, it would have been a lot cheaper because you're doing the construction anyway, right? Yeah, but that's now what I don't understand is once the price, the material price. delta between 12 inch pipe and 6 inch pipe, you think it'd be 30, 40 percent more. Yeah, there is quite a bit of difference in the pipe sizes so if you see that. There's a lot more metal in front of this pipe, a lot more volume. Well, yeah, I mean, I know there is. It's Delta. So if we went on a 12 inch pipe, no, we're, we're done. I'm we sorry? Have, we shouldn't have to blow size from 12 inches. Shouldn't have to. 12 inch. We'll do a 12 inch pressurized water line is quite a, quite a big pipe for it's us. It's four times the volume of six inches. It's material costs and there's also some construction costs. I mean, when you're when you're dealing with that larger pipe, it's a heavier pipe. 
uh, the trench has to be wider, so there's a little bit of additional cost in excavation, rock to go back in the trench, that sort of thing. That's why the cost is so different. This but, could be a lot more volume for the future. Yes, sir. Yeah. Staff recommendation is alternate one. Cutting to the chase. I'm sorry? Cutting to the chase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? Motion for alternative one. Make a motion to approve alternative one. Second. Motion by Mr. Keefer, second by Mr. Uh, Wilkins for alternative one. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. And the passage is next. Item number eight. <clears throat> Consideration to approve change order number one with Rain Shine Irrigation LLC related to McCall Park Project. Yes, sir. Again, Eric Larson, Assistant County Manager. Your uh, change order you're looking at from McCall Park, as you know, is under construction. We've had several design changes uh, during construction. Um, to summarize, and it's in the report in detail, but to summarize, we did some additional engineering uh, post a bid award on stormwater management and grading. Uh, we partnered with the, the the contractor to get that work done through his engineering surveyor that he had hired to do the staking of the project. Uh, we added stormwater pipe and uh, stormwater retention basin, which is probably the largest price, uh, in, a, in addition to additional grading. And it really was a, a need to get additional fill material. So we're doing that by digging a stormwater pond, which we needed anyway, on the backside of the project. To offset some of that cost, there were several value engineering proposals made by the contractor, the biggest being the restroom. We had designed that for a total demolition and rebuild, but through remodeling of the interior spaces, putting a new roof on, redoing the plumbing, we're able to bring that, that restroom in for several thousand dollars, 16,000 uh, below original estimate for that line item to offset some of that cost. Um, there's also several other changes. We value engineered the roofing material on the pavilion uh, and uh, reusing some of the existing chain link material as it's being removed from the ball fields to do additional improvements to the playground and that sort of thing. So all together, there is an increase in cost, as you see in the proposal, of uh, uh, $58,000 is the change order amount, uh, 58145 excuse me and uh, we'll add some additional time to the contract. We're giving them some time because of the additional grade work and the delays, <clears throat> excuse me, in the engineering design that was needed. Uh, and staff recommended approval of alternate one. Any questions or discussion? A motion for alternative one. Any motion to approve alternative one? Second. Motion by Mr. Burdett, second Mr. Corey for alternative one. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Thank you. Thank you. Item <clears throat> number nine, consideration to approve the contract with Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, <clears throat> MetLife, for employee dental and vision insurance for the year 2022. <clears throat> Good evening, gentlemen. I'm Sarah Malsoff, um, Assistant Director of Human Resources. Um, tonight we are here to ask you guys to consider approving the MetLife contract renewal for 2022, which um, covers our dental and vision insurance. Um, in summary, there is no increase for our vision rates, but there will be a slight increase of 6% for the dental rates. Um, staff is recommending alternative one. Any questions for discussion? It's good to meet you tonight. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Do you have a motion for alternative one? A motion to approve alternative one. Second. Motion Mr. Burdett and Mr. Ford second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed no. Okay, thank you. Um, it's, it's tradition that you take five minutes and tell us all about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, uh, teasing when I was taking, telling uh, Tim the other day, I, I think of Dwight in the future. All the staff that comes under the administrative uh, leadership, not the public uh, safety, but those we hire, like fire will be under us. Yes. Uh, and not the uh, sheriff. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to when they get hired, it's maybe, maybe bring them to the next meeting, introduce us to them so we can get to know and trust yeah. them about them and so forth. It's a great idea. Yeah, a name with a face. That's right. Yes. Okay. That's right. After us. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got item number 
10, consideration to approve to renew the contract with the mayor time for 2022. Yes, sir. Um, staff is requesting consideration to approve the Maritime contract renewal for 2022. Uh, we are expected a slight increase in our service fees, and that is due to us utilizing them now as our employee assistance program EAP provider, which the board did approve um, earlier on the 9-7 meeting. Um, they will also be using them for the disease management program. Staff is recommending alternative one. So maritime, they, they are the agency that oversees our civil. Yes, sir. They're our third-party administrator, so they do our claims and everything. Do you have any numbers on how we're doing on that? Yeah. Um, they, we will have, we have a meeting next week. Next week, next yeah, week we yes, sir. Meeting next week. This is just for the administration part of it. Right. Um, how, what our actual experience numbers are going to be, which is going to affect our uh, stop loss insurance right. um, renewal. Uh, that we will have uh, next week. Okay, sounds good. It's sparked my mind. I wonder how we're doing on this self insured mm -hmm. project. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Any other questions, discussion? Motion for alternative one. Make a motion to approve alternative one. Second. Motion Mr. Burnett, second by Mr. Cooper for alternative one. All in favor say aye. All in favor say aye. Passage unanimously. We have two additional items that we move from the consent agenda. We'll go back and pick those up. This is item number 11. New business consideration to approve the 2022 10 uh, holiday schedule with the addition of GT as a recognized pay model. Who's going to speak to that? That's the removal from the consent agenda. Is there something else to do? Do you have that? Yes, yeah. I do. Okay. Yes, sir, I do. Um, and I may have worded that wrong um, since it was the first one I wrote. I do apologize. So basically, um, staff is requesting consideration to approve the 2022 county holiday scheduled with the addition of Juneteenth as a recognized paid holiday. Um, just with everything that's currently going on, um, there are certain areas in Georgia that have now moved to recognizing this as a paid holiday. Um, I provided that in the report. I hope you guys have that list of the cities close to us. Um, and if staff does not approve that, uh, we ask alternative two that you guys approve the holiday schedule without Juneteenth as a paid day off. It is a federal holiday, correct? Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I should make note, I'm sorry, after I sent this to Ms. Stephanie, um, the city of Rinkin and city of Springfield are kind of watching and waiting to see what we do to determine which direction they go. <laughs> yes. Well, as of now, we look at we, we observe all federal holidays, and this has been a federal holiday. Jane, I can't understand you, I'm sorry. As of right now, we follow all the federal holidays and the way I see it is, I, I don't see why we would change on one holiday now that's been deemed a federal holiday. So I would, I would think we would fall in line and recognize that as a holiday. That's just my opinion. And so, I, so we currently recognize all the federal holidays. Yes. Yes, sir. We have 12 paid holidays already. Yes, sir, we do currently. Y'all want to swap out one out for Labor Day or? Uh, Thanksgiving you have two days and Christmas you have two days if y'all want to swap one of those days out for it but we don't need over 12 that's one a month so we don't need any more holidays it costs us too much money okay and you got the price out yes sir um it's about fifty-seven thousand for the to cover everybody's salary on a daily and you figure that and you figure that for a year we spend a lot of money on our employees already you get paid vacation you get sick leave, you got insurance. I don't know what else y'all might want, but I don't think we One of the legal issues would be running into. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody really wanted to push back on that. That's another concern I have. Push back on having or not having? On oh, not having. Yeah. If we say no, we're not going to do it, but we take another way, hey, it's, it's a federal holiday. Yep. I got Which you. Something I'm not worried about. Is the cost truly 58? Is that just the cost of? Our employees for that day. Is there additional cost? Because I'm going to take my contention on holidays. It's like 
most of all, you get a lot of data. You're still going to work your hours somewhere. Yeah. You're still going to work your hours yeah. somewhere. A lot of times the management staff comes in and works on holidays, so you get caught up. Yes, so I don't know. Is, is that a real cost or is that just a payroll for one day? That's, sir, that's payroll for one day. That's what we pay employees for one day's pay. But it would for increase the, our budget. It just, it's, no, sir. No, We're going to pay it regardless of whether we work or not. Yes. Yes. You just leave the labor. The workload stays the same. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Work, you still got to get done. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, sir. And as far as uh, Commissioner Deloach's question about legality, you're not required to, to give federal holidays off. There's no requirement. A lot of a lot of companies and businesses go from zero holidays to you know, 10, they pick and choose which holidays they want to recognize. So there is no um, possibility of, of legal issues if we choose not to recognize that holiday. Any other counties? No, Sir? Okay. There's other counties, surrounding counties already do this. Is this there a state list? It's not a state holiday, but other counties in the area. Yes, this is a list of um, counties that have done it are up top, and then the ones who have not are on the bottom. You have that. Do I have that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is um, a budget effect uh, on this in that um, not all employees are going to have the day off. Um, and so um, EMS is going to continue to work, fire is going to continue to work, prison, 911, etc. And so when you have a day off and then require uh, for all employees and then require the employees to work, they're essentially getting paid. Um, uh, for the day off and uh, for the day that they're working. Yes. Uh, and so there's that for those folks who have to come in and work um, on that day, there's there's that expense. It may not be, it doesn't equal that $57,000, but, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 would, it would in fact have a, uh, have a budget effect. These are just families that are other counties. Yeah. Um, Lanier County, Eccles County, Rockdale, yeah. Eccles, Lanier. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to say something? No, sir. One thing I wanted to point out, though, too, in a continuation of Mr. Callanan's statement, is we do also authorize our employees to move holidays. So they may decide, like if they are scheduled to work on that particular day, then they can take that eight hours off on, a, on another work day. So the budget kind of is, yes, it's going to increase our budget cost, but then there's also a way that it's not going to because the, the employee has a chance to use it on another day. It's kind of fluid. Does that make sense? <laughs> sense? <laughs> but the offices are closed. Yeah, the, the offices are closed. Yes, sir. Um, you know, but the issue is with emergency services is that um, when someone takes off, um, like when some, if, if um, someone were to take off uh, in, in finance, the other workers would kind of cover that position. Um, they've got to usually bring someone else in to cover that open spot. So, it, you know, I just think that the emergency services, it's safe to say that um, for those um, folks, it's going to cause a net increase. Uh, on, on the budget, um, but for everyone else, with the exception of the, uh, you know, the inconvenience for the office not being open, it's not, it's not uh, an additional cost uh, per se for us. Just the loss of uh, the productivity for a day. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing that's not something that, that celebrates the independence that's expressed by Jim. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I fall down on this. Um, you know, I, I see we have Independence Day, obviously. We was set free from uh, the King's oppression. None of us remember. Uh, many of us don't remember the oppression of uh, African American brothers and sisters that were under, but it was real. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a celebration of that Independence Day for it. I don't have a church. So the things we have, they really celebrate this. It's important to them. So from a personal standpoint, I really have a, a, a heart to see us have a celebration 
that continues to bring healing and recognition that we are one nation under God. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I know it's a lot of holidays, and maybe the way you want to look at it, but I, as I look down, I, I don't see, I see days for um, special people like Columbus and Martin Luther King, I see days for like Memorial Day, people who have fallen in the, in the uh, that's, the, that's the Revolutionary War in the uh, um, North and South War, right? Mm -hmm. If there's two wars, you have Veterans Day, recognizing those guys, but we don't have anything recognizing that they will be as collectively as a nation. Say no more of this. So for that reason, I would, I would encourage you all to consider this um, as a national national holiday. You know, to look back, but to look forward to greater <coughs> unity and recognition that we are all one nation and yes. indivisible. Mm -hmm. So that's just my thought from the heart, not on the number of days that they had, but mm -hmm. as a staff already. I couldn't understand what you were saying, but anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying you are. You don't have to make a motion to deny it. Okay. Well, I'll entertain that motion and we'll see if there's a second. Is there a second to the motion to deny the request? Right, that motion fails for lack of a second. Is there a motion to approve the current uh, holiday schedule with the addition of Juneteenth? as another holiday for our staff. So moved. Second. Motion of Mr. Deloach. That was a nine, the extra holiday, but okay in the regular holiday that we got now. No, this is a motion to approve the 12 holidays and then June 10th mm -hmm. as additional holiday. That was the motion from Mr. Deloach. Is that correct? Yeah, there wasn't a second. I don't think Grace realized there was enough. He may it was about a second to your motion, so it, it, it was, it was, uh, it failed. It, it failed because of lack of a second. Yeah, I, I made a motion to deny. Well, I, I didn't get a second from anyone, so I can't take any action in this second. Okay. So I asked for another motion. I had a motion to approve the 12 days plus the June 10th, and a second from Mr. Burdett. Okay. Can you open discussion? Yeah, but we can have more discussion. Okay. Okay. I want to support it, um, but there's one thing, and it's in our staff report that really digs at me. Uh, when it, when it, uh, and I just want to make sure that as a county, uh, when we discuss if police brutality, I mean, as we talked about, there are some that are working on that day, and ironically, it's our police. And I just want to publicly make sure, you know, that that's um, not a wording I like and want to and want to be a part of this. I would like that stricken also. Okay, that's fine. Yes. I, I, would too. Yes. I, like that. And I know it wasn't the intent. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean it that way because I definitely I support I our law enforcement. Yes. That, that's really hurt them. I mean, they, it really has. And mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's the board's heart like you're saying to approve this to celebrate the, 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 the day of independence when we no longer yes. have this practice in the nation. It was finally done. In Texas with yes, us. I think we were just trying to say that recognizing Juneteenth I, I, came yeah. about as a result of sure. recent times. Sure. Where is that? It's in the background. Yeah, yeah the background, the last sentence. Yeah. Because of protests related to police brutality, I, I'd like to understand. And I do that for our law enforcement. Oh, I yes, really, yes, sir. That, yeah. That's my. This was the first one I wrote, so no problem. <laughs> <laughs> we'll remove that. That's <laughs> And it's on the staff report. It's not known. I know it's not. I, I just, I just wanted it to be. Record. I just wanted it to be it's on the record. It's there now. Right. Okay. I'm going to put a record that's on the staff report. I understand. Principal's yeah. part of the minutes. I, I can appreciate the racial injustice part. Yeah. I, it's just. The, the staff report isn't part of the minutes. That's right. It's not. No, it's not. Okay. Right. That's all. For the record, I agree with Commissioner Keeper. <laughs> that, that's all I want to do. That's all. Okay. Seems good. Something wrong with you. Okay. Thank you. Any more discussion? All right. This is probably what we call questions. We don't need to do that. You say all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Aye. And we'll note that Mr. Roper will be noted. Okay. All right. That's what it is. All right. So. Get an extra holiday. 
At a number 12, we moved to the consent agenda. Uh, at number 2, at number 12, there was consideration to approve an assemblage permit for Halloween trick or treating at the Royal Oak subdivision on Saturday, October 30th, beginning at 6 p.m. The reason I took that, I thought we were going to have to have some discussion, which we do. I think it's been resolved. The neighbors are texting me now. So, the, the story was years ago, in the Royal Oak, there weren't as many neighborhoods. The, uh, a lot of the surrounding areas become a trick or treat in Royal Oaks. There would just be just so many cars, it was dangerous for the children. There's no sidewalks in Royal Oaks. They were allowed to park up, and there's a five acre field up in front of the neighborhood. The citizen that owns that had told them last year that they weren't going to be allowed to park there. Um, so if there's no place to park, I don't, I don't want to park it up and down Highway 17. The only other option would be park over at Zion Luther Church. I hadn't got permission from them, so I wasn't sure whether I was going to support it. The citizen that owns the field, I guess they negotiated the truce this year. So they are going to be able to park in the field. So I'm fine with closing it. This is something. Yeah, we only do for Royal Oaks um, because so many people do come out of Sand Hill and just come through that neighborhood trick or treat. So I would move to support it at this point. So, is there any further discussion on I don't know. I'm just trying to explain why I pulled it off and what's going on. And I'm surprised other neighborhoods don't do it. I live at McCain, it's just the same thing. Yes, sir. But we have sidewalks in our neighborhood. So cars can drive through and the kids can walk up and make sidewalks. It is dangerous without the size of this. So, do you have a motion for alternative one? Yes, motion for alternative one. Sure. Motion by Mr. Floyd, second by Mr. Uh, Logan for alternative one. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed no. And the pass is unanimous. I believe that completes our business, so we can move into reports from our staff, mission staff, and from our staff. Yeah, I just have uh, uh, three quick things. Um, first off, we did have a kickoff meeting uh, with the county uh, and, and uh, the United Way with regards to our uh, fundraising campaign last year um, with uh, Sarah's leadership. We um, broke uh, records, uh, and this year they upped our challenge uh, for the Board of Commissioners employees uh, to 10000 10000 What's that? $10,000. Yeah, $10,000, and so we're going to uh, see if we can uh, uh, see if we can meet that and exceed it. Uh, also, I wanted to give you a progress on the county administration building. Uh, it is moving towards finishing construction. I was down there today. Uh, it looks fantastic. Uh, some of the back orders of construction materials are, are starting to uh, finally come in. Uh, uh, such as doors, uh, etc., uh, and some of the shortages we had uh, with regards to the subcontractors out there are starting to, they're starting to get caught up again. So we're, uh, we're nearing completion there. What is going to be a holdup for moving everybody in there uh, is the furniture. Uh, and uh, the latest we got on the furniture delivery, this is, was put in uh, sometime over the summer, uh, is, um, uh, early November. Is it November 8th? What's it? November 8th? Yeah, November 8th. Um, so that's going to be the holdup, but if you remember, we did purchase furniture uh, with when we purchased the building, uh, and most of that furniture is going towards development services, so our hope is to move development services in there first uh, with the existing furniture, and then um, once the uh, additional furniture comes in, uh, we'll be able to move um, uh, county managers, clerk, HR, finance, and DPH in there. Uh, but I think uh, you know, we can do a tour once the construction part is done, uh, awaiting uh, the furniture. Uh, if you want to see the, the finished product, it's, it's looking great. Uh, lastly, our, um, our COVID data, just to give you an update uh, from our meeting uh, um, uh, two weeks ago, uh, it's, uh, it continues to show um, uh, that steady improvement. Uh, we're almost to the point of having our numbers um, averaging down to where we were uh, prior to the spike. Um, uh, I mean, give you an example, we're probably averaging 11 uh, new positive cases, uh, and when we peaked, we were at 152. 
so it came up, uh, came down faster than it came up, which, uh, you know, we're uh, doing uh, uh, any of the superstitions necessary uh, that uh, is going to uh, hopefully keep that going in that right direction. We'll back to normal. And that's my report. Any questions, any questions for our manager? I got one question while you're here. How about no Louisville Road? I had one of those people over there in uh, Allen. Yes. So you sent us an update on what was taking place, but I hadn't heard anything. Yeah, else. and so what we um, what we are doing with the engineer on that um, to speed things along as quick as we can. It, it's kind of a major uh, construction project at this point. It's five 60-inch pipes uh, plus the foundation and the um, uh, and the cement um, uh, shear wall. Uh, that is. Um, uh, they are working with contractors so we can do a design build on that uh, so we don't have to wait for the sole, full design to come out, then uh, put out for RFP, uh, then go through that entire 60 day process and then award it, wait for mobilization. We can get started and the design and the construction hopefully can get started simultaneously um, so they can start building uh, and finishing up the design uh, at the same time. Uh, but that still will take a couple of weeks uh, to get that started. Uh, we are working with the um, with the engineer Atlas. They are working with the contractor uh, to kind of get final prices so I can uh, move that forward on an emergency procurement basis. But that should that should permanently uh, fix the problem. Uh, but we did look at the option of the old pipe there; it's too damaged uh, to uh, to get reused. So uh, we will. Uh, probably, I think the most of the cost is construction. Um, maybe a, a twenty percent of it is material, um, and whether we put the old pipe in or new pipe in, the construction cost is going to be the same. So, um, I think the making sure there's adequate capacity in there, uh, we won't have to do this again. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Johnson. <laughs>
hopefully we'll be back on track next week. We just got to get the deal done when they put it off. Yeah. I'll check it to see you guys. Okay. Well, I'll send you all an email before the end of the week, and then you can just kind of reply on that email. You can't let me know if we don't have a representation of the agent of the plan. I'm hoping not to. Okay. Right, Mr. Lippy, anything else you want to know? Share and discuss? No, I'm all ready. Okay. I'm all ready. Okay. Um, the only thing I have, um, I still want to, to look at somehow taking more of a proactive approach on some of the, the tractors that are just dropping trailers on the side of the road, particularly on all Augusta. Um, I noticed, uh, gosh, last week there were two dropped. It's, there's an area, um, it's just north of this rezoning that had two entrances put in, like for future. And they're just backing in and I talked to the sheriff and he said it's hard to know whether they're in the right way or not but me looking at it that, there's no way a trailer can back perpendicular to the road and not be in the right way um, but we need to just to clean it up just you know uh, we just don't want to be, it's, it's going to become more of an issue okay and just uh make sure you know everybody knows we're taking a position of oh, I want to things cleaning around I mean, we could potentially, if it's problem areas, you know, we can come up with a custom sign. Yeah. Um, so um, that that would probably be the easiest way to do it, and then, um, and then, you know, that, that's better. Put that sign on the edge of the right of way, and what would you question about the right of way? We probably need to confirm where the right of way is. That, yeah. That's what, if, if there was a way even to mark it or something, that's I think even With all the dust, we got a lot of yeah. right of way, um, because yeah. we have enough right of way to widen it. Um, yeah. And so I'm assuming that probably is in the right way. Yeah. So I think the deputies could do more if they could confirm, I right. guess, somehow. Well, we deal with it every day. I know. I do. I also ask Eric and Tim, you know, is there something we can put there, a barrier, uh, something to keep them on the right way? Is it just, especially when it's muddy and you know, giant holes. Well, it, something it, we can do. Yeah. Is that what I the something? The barrier is going to have parking zone. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we could, I, I can tell you, we tried that in the past when we had an issue over Georgia Pacific and they just ran over the signs. Yeah. Um, but uh, we. <laughs> no, I, I, there's but, no easy solution. Yeah, but, but we can, you know, you can always What? Signs, they're not bothers. 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 I mean, possibly, if yeah, they wouldn't run with Augusta, I guess. I don't know. Come on, the party got paid for it. Yeah, but, we, but you know, we can be a little bit more proactive, oh, as you oh, said. Yeah. At least putting up the signs and um, doing a little bit more, you know, with regards to warnings and... Uh, yeah, that's a new one. The worst thing, I mean, they, they leave them there, so it's tough to, you know, uh, to take it and we got to track them down, but uh, we, can, we can figure it out. That's all I had. I just wanted to put that bug in, in our area. I just want to get up there on three things Staffordshire, private roads, and uh, gun range. And we talked about we we're going to staff is going to get some information to the retreat. Yeah, and so um, I'll, I'll go on the last two uh, first, which is uh, the um, gun range and um, uh, private roads. Private private roads. roads. Yeah, uh, those we were gonna, we're, we just recently did a kickoff on the zoning, and those are kind of a, a, a zoning and ordinance change, uh, certainly on, on the gun range, um, where um, we were looking at two options. I know we were looking at AR1, but we were also um, considering whether or not uh, a, um, a, a PUD might be a better option uh, for that as well. And so we hired the firm to take a look at our zoning ordinance uh, and then, you know, we're going to kind of get their feedback uh, on that. Um, you know, rather than, for the same reason, a, a, a plan unit development would give us a little bit more um, uh, authority on what the conditions are there. And since we're not talking about many gun ranges, um, that, that may be the, the way to go. Um, uh, and uh, similar to, I want to get their feedback on the private road issues just to find out what other people are doing. Um, and we had our kickoff meeting, but we're going to have a, a follow-up meeting with them uh, and just ask 
how other places are dealing with that within their zoning ordinances. Um, we I've got some feedback on uh, on Buford County how they do it, um, and it's not. There's I think we discussed when we discussed it at the workshop. It is um, there's no easy way to fix it, um, but you just kind of give folks an option, and if they can meet all those hurdles of um, uh, of the special tax district getting every, getting 100 percent support and so on and so forth. Uh, and then we can codify that in our, in our ordinance and we'll move forward with there. But I do want to get their feedback on it because I really don't want to reinvent the wheel no, on something so complicated. More you can call the court and then we got more people with problems trying to get along. That's right. Yeah. Okay, I'll ask a question yeah. on one of those. All right. I know it's going to be direct, but what is our goal here with gun rates? Just have something that Because I'm, I'm going to be the one that ends up having to deal with in District 3. I've already talked to the sheriff. The sheriff has been crystal clear. This is not what we need. A bunch of gun ranges popping up throughout the county. No, I agree with that. No, so I mean, it just, it if they're safe and done right, what's the problem? Like, that's my thing. Yeah. Right. And I, I mean, it's just it's like any other. Done, and any other. I mean, and, and there's people doing it. There's, there's their interest just like, it's a sport to many people just like other sports. And there's a demand. There's people wanting it. And then they end up in the I get that, but when we open up the floodgates for gun ranges everywhere, I mean, do you want to hear that crap? I don't think it's so. I mean, I don't. I think if it's, that acreage has to be there, you got to do it a certain way, you got to do your, your right approvals, and you do it right, it ain't going to be so easy for people to just want to jump in and do it. Well, and I just want to make sure we're real there. careful with this. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, especially when you do so commercially, then you got to cut it. We moved another floodgates of warehouses in my district. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's just that. Hey, I got a racetrack in my way. You know, one of the things that. I, well, I look at it. To me, it's, it's a bunch of folks with ARs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's to be a good thing. Yeah. 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 Y
We'll stay on track with the research. We'll get that back to us and we can have a discussion. That leads to something I want to say for the fish next time. I'd like to schedule a whether it's a Friday or Saturday, three or four hours a week. We can try to do it before meeting, but we have a lot of action points. I feel like we need to follow up in the next two months to know exactly where we're going with these things and have a chance to hash them out and not have the pressure being on the family on school right now. Can we get those action points emailed out or can I get a copy of them? Yeah, didn't did you do that? Or we have the, the action points you're going to type up and provide us the. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm. Uh, we did, yeah, we, we did, I apologize for not getting mad at it. Of, I, I actually have, we have, have them already. Yeah, a lot of that is in the minutes, too. So, uh, we need to go back and see what staff is going to get some more passion. But if you, if, I think it would be helpful if, if there's a, a presentation of the 10 or 12 things, because there's a lot of things in the minutes that we mentioned is all wrong. You know? But there's several things we said, all right, let's, that's an action act, action act. Right. Yeah, I, 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 we have it in a, um, uh, an outline format. So uh, let's, let's just get that to all the It's my fault. I, I thought I sent it out. I must not have. Uh, but we, we have it already. I'll, I'll dig it up and shoot it out to you. If you even have, we send it and then uh, at the next meeting, let's be looking at is there a Saturday in November or we need the first year? But I'd like to do something fairly soon. Just a, two or three hours. We're not into our discussion to start seeing where we are. If you have some updates and some of these things, like the fire. Sure. Yeah, like the private roads, is there something I can tell a constituent at this point? You know, we're looking at a timeline of this, or we're about to have another meeting, and they're going to have all the residents get together. And I'd like to be able to tell them something, you know, rather than, hey, we're I, I would tell them, Tim, that we, we, we've reviewed it in our last workshop. Staff is giving information for us on that. We've got some contracting looking at sure. possible, um, and we're going to know you sometime in the next uh, 45 days. Yeah, let, let me let me give you a date um, when I sit down uh, tomorrow uh, that I can that I can get something out in a in a rough draft format uh, because I have a feeling once the folks see what's what's really going to be required to get this done. Um, you know, either they're they're going to easily make the determination whether this is something that can be accomplished or not, um, and then uh, they can kind of figure it out from there. Well, at least it gives them something, right? If they're willing to do it, and I, and I love that rather than having no option at all. Right. Yeah, we discussed two or three options that they could possibly you know, try to find a law or something. I know it's not. I know it's ugly. Just to have no option at all and have no way to pay the road and you know, want to do something. You know, Staff Charter got, actually got a another complaint. The guy's back in our department and I told him we've been working on that. So, yeah, Staff Charter? Oh, yes. Um, and we, again, um, uh, we, we're waiting on that. Yeah, and so we, after that last meeting, um, uh, they were they were going to come back to it. We we have communicated with them after the last meeting. We made it clear what um, what the steps are from here, uh, and now we're just waiting for a response on it. Okay, um, from that. yeah, that's, that's the meeting. That was that. Was that. that was the meeting, right? Yeah, right. we're waiting on some plans, really. But it was, that's right. From then, once we got the plans, we were we were going to share the cost of the meeting confirmation. We had to happen. We were going to do that. Yeah. They were going to take care of the construction part. Right? That's correct. No, no, we were we were pretty clear in, in the communication after the meeting okay. uh, that we were in agreement as to what the next steps were, and we're just waiting for information from that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else? No, sir. All right. Is there anything from anyone else in the staff? Yes, sir. I just wanted, I'm sure y'all know, but I just wanted to recognize Dr. Goldwart. I'll speak to Larry. Our new judge Goldwater back here yeah. with our magistrate court. Well, huh? Mr. Goldwater is with the magistrate court? Yes, yeah, he's been appointed as a new magistrate judge. <laughs> I just said, I was going to buy you to see the other thing on the show with us tonight. It's always good to have you here, Dr. Goldwater. You, you want to address the board? It's always a blessing when you come. I'll give you an opportunity if you'd like to speak to the board. How's this that? So he's a he's a new magistrate judge? Yeah, working on not the chief, not the chief. I see you have a learned man all uh, 
Chairman Corbett. I never turn down an opportunity to step up to a microphone. I don't always get to say, get to say what I want to say at home, so I, I find I take advantage of the opportunities that I've offered. Seriously, uh, I'm Franklin Goldwire, and good afternoon to you, uh, to the board, and to the members here. I'm just excited to, once again, offer my services to the county. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, so far the training has been great. I've learned so much about this county <laughs> and about the people in this county. They're all great people, but you know, it doesn't matter how good you are, you're going to have some problems. <laughs> and uh, that's what the court is uh, charged to do, is help folks resolve their differences and uh, improve their situation in life. And that's, that's the good, fun part about it, that the court can make a difference and relieve some pressures and pains on some individuals who have no other alternative but the court. So I thank you for the opportunity to serve and looking forward to it. So thank you very much and we appreciate all you do to, to make things better here in the county. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you served that position. You do a great, wonderful job. All right, is there any other business for the board? Do we have a need for executive session tonight? Okay. There's no need for executive session. We have a motion. Do we have a motion? No. No, no minutes. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Keeper, second by Mr. Burnett to adjourn this meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. And we stand adjourned.